Ferocious Cambosis, a name that runs right off the tongue, fluid and smooth. A name that correlates to Cambosis Jr.'s elite technical proficiency, backed by a Spartan warrior attitude, a descendant of a mighty Greek-Australian heritage. George is inspired by the Spartan phrase, never retreat, never surrender, and boy has he not taken a step back so far. Let's take a deep dive into the story of Australia's unified lightweight boxing champion of the world, George Ferocious Cambosis Jr. We start this story in the south of Sydney, in the St. George and Sutherland regions. George started initially from extremely humble beginnings. George Cambosis Sr., the grandfather of George Cambosis Jr., came to Australia as a refugee in 1965 in hopes for a better life. George Cambosis Jr. found himself as an outsider at Bexley Public School at the age of 11. An overweight Greek kid, he found it hard to fit in, often excessively bullied at school, with his father Jim noticing that George was starting to become more reclusive. He would come up with the idea for George to take up boxing as a way to lose his weight, but also for self-defense. George would turn up at the Rockdale Police Citizens Youth Club to the smell of the leather bags, the blood of the gloves, and 30 minutes into his first session, he was in the ring, sparring against a more experienced kid. It was in his first sparring session where Cambosis Jr. fell in love with the sweet science. Cambosis Jr. would shed his weight in quick time, going from 61 kilograms to 44 kilograms over the summer. Cambosis would see drastic improvements in not only his fitness, but his confidence, and this would transfer into his first true love, which was rugby league. A diehard Sydney Roosters fan, George's dream, from as long as he could remember, was to wear the red, white and blue. He returned to his local side, the Gymea Gorillas, as a stud. Previously trailing the park in sprints, Cambosis Jr. had become a powerhouse, and he showed it on the field. Cambosis Jr. was now turning heads on the footy field and gaining the attention of the Cronulla Sharks head coach, Ricky Stewart, as he would find himself selected for the Sharks development squad. George was over the moon, as he dreamt one day of becoming an NRL star. His very young career would hit a crossroads though, as the two sports began to clash. Cambosis Jr.'s boxing fitness hobby had slowly turned into a potential career. George's dad, Jim Cambosis, would advise George on the clash in dates and training between the two sports, with George having to choose between either boxing or rugby league. George's father would return all his new representative training gear back to Ricky Stewart, and George had made his decision. He was going to become a professional boxer. I want, I want to push myself to the limits, and I want to make myself proud, my family proud, my fans proud. George Cambosis Jr. did not play around in his full transition into boxing. He became a king in the amateur scene. Jim and George travelled globally to accelerate George's career. Whether it was in Russia, Ukraine, Armenia, America, or back in Australia, Cambosis Jr. was fighting, and fighting well. With a total of 100 bouts in the amateur boxing scene, Cambosis Jr. would win 85 fights with 26 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Keep in mind, Cambosis Jr. was often fighting boxers much older than him and doing it with much less experience. The accolades would pile up in the amateur scene and become the New South Wales Amateur Boxing State Champion seven times and won the National Golden Gloves five times as well. A bronze medal at the Arafura Games, plus two silvers and a bronze at the Australian National Championships, meant George had built a name for himself in the amateur Australian boxing scene. A countback draw against fellow Australian boxer Luke Jackson would mean that he would just miss out on the Australian boxing team for the Olympics. From there, he decided to go professional. Here's a 19-year-old George Kembos at the local Croatian club in Punchbowl, New South Wales, in his first professional bout, where he was scheduled for six rounds, but they were not needed. By his third fight, he would win the New South Wales Pro title, and by his sixth fight, he would be the Australian lightweight champion. His success was rapid. Like his amateur career, Cambosis Jr. was taking fights early and often in his pursuit for legacy. George's obsession for boxing had only grown at this point, and I'm being serious, the Australian competition were just not in his league, like not even a little bit. He would face the top class Australian competition like Camille Bala and Brandon Ogilvie, taking up a training camp in the USA for the first time with Justin Fortune, a celebrity trainer who trains the like of Manny Pacquiao and Mikey Garcia. It was a big step for the Aussie, but he would dominate his sparring opponents, many of them former world champions. He would do the same to both Bala and Ogilvy, recognised as world level Aussie talent, taking out both the WPA Pan Asian and WBA Oceania titles in the process. Cambosis Jr. had a choice. 
Continue fighting in Australia and dominate the scene also while earning significantly more money as you become the main event and could sell pay-per-views or test his worth in the USA and basically start over again, making a name for himself on the world scene. The thing is, every fight and step taken up until this point was taken with intention and purpose. Cambrosis Jr. never cared about the money, he wanted the legacy. He wanted to be recognised as Australia's greatest and moving abroad was what he needed to do to achieve that. And to be able to have an opportunity like that to spar 250 rounds with one of the greatest of all time, I mean, what he won world titles in what, eight divisions? Eight divisions, 13 Crazy. or 14 world titles. It, Crazy. It will never be done again. The opportunities and relationships he would build by making this decision would be priceless. Through Justin, George would meet the great Manny Pacquiao and a bromance would blossom. In preparation for Manny Pacquiao's fight for Jeff Horn, Manny was looking for sparring partners and felt George's boxing style would help him prepare for the fight. Manny and George went from simply sparring partners to becoming best friends, running sprints through the mountains of General Santos in the Philippines, sparring and playing pool together, Manny took George under his wing. George said at times he'd have to pinch himself, as he remembers watching Pacquiao as a kid, defeating the likes of Miguel Cotto and Oscar De La Hoya. His 10 week camp in the Philippines did not come without sacrifice though, as he had left his pregnant partner Rebecca at home, realising the opportunity to train with Pacquiao was an opportunity of a lifetime. The other issue at this point was Isis, who at this time had taken control over parts of the Philippines, in particular the town of Marui, only two hours away of where Cambosis Jr. was. Being with Pacquiao, one of the most highly notable figures in the Philippines and a politician, it became extremely dangerous for the crew. They would continue to train though, running every morning through extremely treacherous terrain with Pacquiao's entire army behind them. Manny would later state that George worked harder than anyone else in his crew and saw a world championship in his future. Thankfully, Cambosis Jr. would return back to Australia safe and just in time for his first child. His relationship with Manny Pacquiao would help him to get onto Manny's next main event as an undercard with the pair totaling 250 sparring sessions together, which George is immensely grateful for. He said Pacquiao had taught him how to truly work hard and it helped him into his next chapter as a boxer. Cambosis Jr. embarked on his international tour, absolutely steamrolling the lightweight competition. First defeating the heavier Jose Ferrero in just 1 minute and 48 seconds, and then J.R. Magbao, both in impressive fashion. A marquee and extremely meaningful fight for Cambosis Jr. would be his bout against Richard Pena at the Galatsi Olympic Hall in Athens, Greece, George's second home. Oh, poor living out of keeping him. Tell us. Winning via technical knockout in rather easy fashion, Cambosis Jr. would go to 17-0, with international fights proving rather successful. You would think with a record like George's and the names he had beat so far, at just 25, there would be significant buzz around him, but there really wasn't. The fight game, no matter what discipline, does not pay well unless you're right at the very top. And Cambosis Jr.'s family was struggling. Living in a tiny shack in LA, George, Rebecca, Jim and their daughter Evelia were all squashed into their shack like sardines. With their only source of money being from George, they often live day to day off George's income from sparring and his fights. It was by no means lavish living. Cambosis Jr. was clearly playing the long game, with his choice to fight overseas amongst the best in the world. His fights were rarely picked up for pay-per-view services back here in Australia, and the pay was pretty grim, but it made it all worth it when he got his first headline fight against former IBF lightweight champion Mickey Bay. The highlight of the fight was his dominating performance in the final round, where he would drop Mickey Bay to the floor and eventually win by split decision. Cambosis Jr's biggest win of his career to that point so far, and it was crucial for his journey for championship gold. This win booked himself into the IBF Eliminator against Lee Selby, with the winner getting a mandatory shot at the IBF World Lightweight title. Again, Cambosis Jr would have to sacrifice time away from his family, spending two months away in training camp in Miami. Cambrosis Jr. understood the magnitude of the fight though, with a win guaranteeing a shot at champion Teofimo Lopez. Cambrosis Jr. would again take a few rounds, gauging the former IBF champion in Selby, but took control from the fourth round, with the highlight being George rocking Selby in the eighth round. George won the fight comfortably despite the verdict being a split decision victory. This win had elevated Cambrosis Jr. to the number one contender slot for the title shot against Teofimo Lopez. There was now no choice but to respect Cambosis Jr. With all those years spent grinding throughout the lightweight division now paying off.
Kimbosis Jr.'s career had been for the most part in the shadows, with very little fanfare, but his rise to the title fight had been extremely calculated. In fact, everything Kimbosis Jr. did was done with vigor and purpose. He was real. Every tattoo that he had meant something. He carried his Spartan heritage through his tattoos, like his Malonga Ver tattoo, translating to, if you want, come and get it, and his never retreat and never surrender tattoo. He lived by these words in the ring, and it had gotten him to where he was. Teofimo Lopez, though, would be no easy task. Just fresh off beating one of the greatest boxers ever in Vasily Lomachenko to win the WBA, IBF, WBO and the ring lightweight titles. The lead up to this bout was hectic. Multiple postponed dates, a change of venue and TV rights. The hype for this fight was immense and it was fiery, with both the fathers of Teofimo and George clashing early on in the build-up. Mind games were played, with George labelling the belts as Teofimo's curse, and Lopez responding by announcing that George would be finished by round one. Cambosis Jr. was stoic and strong through the hype presses. He knew he had to stay focused up against one of the most dangerous boxers on the planet. The round one prediction by Lopez wasn't far off what many else predicted as well, with Lopez a negative 1,100 favourite, and Cambosis Jr. coming in at a plus 600 underdog. For context, that means you would need to bet $1,100 on Teofimo Lopez to win if you wanted to make $100 of profit. Cambosis Jr. was seen by many as just a mandatory challenger, just someone that Lopez could finish early and quickly en route to bigger, higher paying prize fights. In front of a packed Madison Square Garden, Cambosis Jr. and Lopez would go to war. Lopez would start with an immense flurry of strikes, with Cambosis Jr. eating them and having to survive. Cambosis was on the back foot before delivering possibly one of the greatest moments in Australian boxing history. Fight with his opponent. Oh, what a right hand from George Cambosis! An absolutely clean overhand right had sent Lopez down to the floor in a moment which would humble the champion. Cambosis Jr. had shocked everyone up until this point, but had to remain vigilant. Lopez would come out charging the following three rounds, Cambosis again would have to survive. As the fight would go on though, Cambosis Jr's stamina began to shine through. He was winning all the exchanges, sitting in the pocket with one of the deadliest punches on the planet. He controlled the middle rounds before Lopez found a second win in the 8th, 9th and 10th round, with that 10th round being particularly damaging. Last round, the ninth round. Oh, and is that a knockdown? It is! George survived the remaining 1 minute 30 in the 10th round and would go back to his corner. It'd be easy for Gambosis Jr. to just quit now. I mean, 10 rounds against the world's best was nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, many didn't expect him to escape the first round, let alone go 10. The 11th and 12th rounds now became particularly important, most likely the deciding rounds, and Cambosis Jr. showed tremendous heart, almost oh boy, flicking the switch. Up the win, or picked up the round in that last round, and he is now possibly one round away from the biggest win in Australian boxing history. Lopez now seemed gas, and like in George's entire career, his fitness, much like his mentor Manny Pacquiao's, reigned supreme. George Cambosis just fought the fight of his life. He provided a spirited fight back winning the final two rounds, with it now in the judges' scorecards. With the controversial nature of judges' scorecards in boxing, tensions were high, but to the naked eye, George had won the fight. He's still undefeated. George had done it. After countless hours of sacrifice from the small gym at the Rockdale Police Citizens Youth Club 16 years ago to Australia's new world champion, atop of the boxing world. A beautiful moment as his father Jim picked him up after the announcement, a man that gave up his career to guide George to a world championship that had just been realised. Easily one of the greatest moments in Australian boxing, the performance will go down in the history books. Now just over half a year later, he will bring the titles back home in a world championship title defence against Devin Haney. As he expects to become the undisputed lightweight champion of the world in front of a sold out Marvel Stadium. From that chubby kid at 12 years of age, to the local Croatian boxing club, to Marvel Stadium. Pretty remarkable, hey? Let's all get behind him this coming 5th of June. Oh, and if you enjoyed this one, please like and subscribe. I would appreciate the support. I hope you guys enjoyed this one.